Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. This time we are doing something new and about well, trying out a new software called TASL. That is a shortcut for trade analysis by association, evolution and linkage. This video is a result of a number of requests that were made in the comment sections for this software. So I decided to try it out. You know, especially in the first videos on this channel, you can hear a catchphrase that we are showing here the genomics from the beginner's perspective. But for this software, this is true also from my perspective, because I actually never used TASL before. So I am interested to see what we can find. In this particular video, we will show how to get TASL, how it looks like, what are the interesting parts, and try to open the tutorial dataset that we get from the website itself. So just a light start to set the basis for our future journey. You can find the software itself quite easily. If you just Google TASL software, you pretty much get instantly to this website. And here you have all the requirements and links that you would ever need. So you see that at the time of taping of this video, uh, this version is relatively new, released just two weeks ago, and this is TASL version 5. One thing to note here immediately that it requires Java 1.8. So this is a prerequisite before the installation of TASL. So how to find if you have Java on your computer already? So you just go to the command line and then type Java dash version. It should work pretty same way regardless of the operating system. I have Windows here, so I just click here and then type CMD for the command line. And here I type Java dash version. I press enter and here I immediately see that I have version 1.8, which is required for TASL 5. If you have an error message here or just a lower version than this, then you need to install Java before installing TASL. If this is done, then you go ahead and download the installation file for TASL, depending on your operating system. So if it's Mac, Windows 64-bit or 32-bit or Unix, and you go through the usual installation process. After this installation process, you might or might not get an icon on your desktop. But if you don't see anything, you just repeat pretty much the same process as before. So go here to the run place and just write TASL. And it actually comes up as an app. So after hitting enter, so this is the screen that greets you. So this is then our working environment. We will return here shortly, but first, I want to go through the other interesting points on the website. Here on the website, we have a few other interesting stuff happening. So there is the TASL documentation and the, namely the user guide and the link for the YouTube tutorials, as well as the link for TASL wiki. So there is a bunch of other things here I did not uh, follow up yet, but uh, well, these are some of the main points that are interesting right now. So the user manual and the wiki are actually one and the same thing. So this is the main help page of TASL that describes a number of things and you can follow up these things if you want to get more information. We will return here and console these web pages and parts in detail at a later stage. The YouTube tutorials link leads you to this Buckler Lab YouTube channel where there are a number of videos about TASL. Unfortunately, not as many as I would have expected. And also I have to add uh, many of these videos are quite uh, old. But this is not a problem because actually this video you are already watching is also about TASL, also on YouTube. And well, we plan to follow up with a number of other videos in a similar style as we did with Blink. But certainly if you are starting out, it is probably a good idea to check out these videos as well. Okay, so back to TASL itself. So this is the program. And uh, so it uh, has a, a few menu items I want to highlight here. So basically here is the, the main menu. Well, I don't know if it's by design, but so it seems to be organized in a way that it presents some kind of a workflow. 
So the files are, you know, just usually open, save and so on. But so there is a, a bunch of things you can do with the data in case you want to impute the data. There seem to be possibilities also for that. Well, filtering, this is uh, reminiscent of the quality control and definitely you will use these uh, menu points for cleaning out your data sets and then you can do analysis of various kinds. So there is this analysis here with the diversity relatedness and association studies of various kinds. Seems to be some kind of visualization options and then a bunch of things related to GBS. Now, this is a bit of a characteristic of TESOL authors that they put abbreviations here without uh, too much of an explanation. So GBS stands for genotyping by sequencing. And uh, well, it's quite an interesting technique. I have to say also, I don't have too much experience with this either. So, well, definitely I'm looking forward to try it out. An interesting phenomenon here again. So here are, is again a menu point that seem to be crossed out. So this is uh, probably the older version of GBS. So there are some workflows here that are just a series of operations from the earlier separate menu points. And the last menu point here is also kind of a mystery. Again, just want to mention that the tassel Authors love abbreviations, but this is not as straightforward as the previous one. And actually I had to search quite a bit what it means. After some Googling, I found out that the, the PHG stands for practical graph series of uh, operations. So this is also described here and for sure we will try it out at a later stage. One more thing to note here is the actually the little bit of hidden uh, well button here or at least for me it's somehow in this right corner the help button or the Elsa menu where you can get a direct access to the manual about uh, the about the software so this is just basically the version number and also some contact information. Here you will learn that there is a TASL user group in a Google group. So this is also a possibility to get some information. And the other two menu points here are showing your memory in the computer and some log file information. I also have to mention that there seems to be also a command line interface or a command line version of the software which is also certainly very useful to know. But, uh, well, when I went on to the website, this graphical user interface was uh, presented to me as first or the default option. So I decided to go with this for the purposes of these videos or for the very beginning anyway, because I assume that this is the version that most people use in their work. So right now, as promised for the ending of this video, we try to open some data on this uh, graphical user interface. And the data in question for now, it will be also from the TASL authors. So on the main webpage, you see here a link which says TASL tutorial data. Well, if you go forward here, it downloads a zip file, you can extract that and you will get then the exactly the same data I will be showing you right now. So we just go forward and click file here and say open. And well, we should navigate into the place where the tutorial data is located. So you see there is a bunch of possibilities and files here, which are necessary or useful for various kinds of demonstrations. But right now we want to open the files in a, well, these are PED and MAP formats. So you just click on this MDP genotype plk.ped file and just click open. And it actually opens the file for you. And well, we can look at its contents. But for now, I want to end it here. Let me know in the comments below about your experiences with TASL and perhaps your favorite type of analysis that you would like to see being done on the Genomics Bootcamp channel. For today, I thank you for your time and have a very nice day.